Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, this is a new week, and I bless God today for his mighty hand upon your life. Can we just pray together? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this week. Thank you for your glory that is revealed through us to the world. Thank you for the beauty of the anointing that you have given to us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that teaches us all things, Lord. And we bring ourselves under the authority of the tutelage of the Holy Ghost. And he will teach us the truth and bring us into everything that is needed for us to live the good life. Thank you, precious Father. Your truth is being made manifest in us. Even as we look into your word today, you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us, but you will feed us freely with our daily bread. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been on the study of 1 Corinthians. And we've, we've, done, we've been on this for a while. And then we've done till chapter, we ended, we ended chapter 5 on Friday. So we're going to go into chapter 6. Praise God. I, I, I know one thing. You're going to have a great week. You know why I know that? Because the Lord has given me his word to give to you. Now, if God is not interested in your life, he will not give you his word. When God gives you his word, then it means everything you need. It doesn't matter what's going to show up. You're covered. Praise God. And that's why you take the word of God very important. As you open your heart even right now to receive it, it will begin to manifest itself in your life. Praise God. So, let's go on now. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Now he's, 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 he's saying something very important here now. You see, he, he's giving clear, definite instructions and things that we have to do it. So he says, look at the word he uses. He says, there. <laughs> Praise God. Don't even try it. Don't even go there. Praise God. How can, how, how, just how can, you know, say, ah, if you dare do that thing, you know, you're saying you don't even try it. Praise God. So he says, there any of you having a matter against another. Now he's talking to people in church. He's talking to um, brethren. He's not just talking to every human being on the earth. He's talking to, remember, he's writing to the saints in Corinth. Now, I told you when we started, that includes you. It doesn't mean that you are in Corinth because he said, who are the saints? The saints are everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if it is good for those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Corinth, it is good for those who call on the name of Jesus Christ in that your village, praise God, and, and your city and your nation, wherever you find yourself. If you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you qualify to read this letter and to take the blessing that is in it for yourself. Praise God. So, he says, then if you have any matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Don't do that. How, how, you know, he, he, how can you? See, you know, somebody's thinking, you know, sometimes people look at scriptures and they say, I don't think this applies to us today. It does! You know the problem? The problem is lack of understanding. When, when you don't lack, when you lack understanding, you won't even know how to appropriate God's truth that is eternal, see, to your life today. So you look at some scriptures, you think, I think this, this didn't take into cognizance of certain behaviors or certain attitudes or certain human beings that, that I'm going to meet in my life. So he says, now look at this. Verse 2, he says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Now, he stretches this thing. Why is he telling you, don't take a brother before the law court? That's actually what he's saying. 
Don't go before an unjust judge. When, when, you see, when he says unjust judge, doesn't necessarily mean the judge is, is going to be unjust to either of you. Doesn't mean the judge will definitely take bribe. No, that's not what he's saying. He says, look, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Remember in chapter 2, he said, he said, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, the spiritual man cannot be judged by anyone. See? He said, he that is spiritual judges all things, but he himself is judged of no man. Right? Okay. Now, these are two spiritual people that he's talking about now. Two brothers, two saints. And then they have an issue. They had a disagreement, whatever it is. Maybe someone is owing you money. Maybe um, whatever, just whatever it is. And then you are thinking, oh, oh, how do we settle this thing? You know, sometimes some argument ends up uh, in, in, in some sort of disag uh, disagreement and even causes fights. So you're in that kind of situation. And then he says, don't take it to the court of law. Don't do that. What should you do? He said, take it before the saints. A brother borrowed money from me. And I'm getting to meet him to pay the money. Now, this is a brother. And he's refusing to pay the money. So, what should I do? I'm supposed to take him to court. Or take him to, you know, over here we, we have EFCC or something. So, what do I do? Now, he is talking about two brothers. You must understand this. He's not talking when an unbeliever is owing you money or the organization you worked for is owing you money. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about two brothers. You know, a brother walks up to you and says, Ah, oh, brother, please. And, or, or a brother have done something wrong or something you think is wrong. And then you go before him and say, Oh, this thing you're doing. He said, No, I don't think it's wrong. I'm, I'm fine. No, I have a problem with it. Why should you have a problem with it? And then you, you, you get into that kind of argument. Say, what should you do? Go before the saints. Now, who are the saints? See, Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him. And their lives are ruled by the Lord Jesus Christ. You should be that way in the first place. See, Now, now first of all, before you even think of going to the saints, you know, we, we ought to grow to this place of maturity where even you can, can go before the Lord and say, Lord, how do I handle this, this issue? And the Lord will tell you what to do. But peradventure, because sometimes emotions get in when it involves another person. Now, this includes marriages. You understand what I'm talking about? A, a husband and wife, they are having an issue. And oh, we cannot, we, you know, we have some irreconcilable differences. So let, let's, let's go to court. Let's go dissolve the, the, the marriage. Now, I, 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 oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I need you to follow me right now. You see, sometimes even the church don't understand. Now, when I mean the church, I'm talking about saints of God don't understand the power or the authority that it carries. See? For example, you know, a husband and wife, you know, they're having issues. And then it's so bad. And then they're like, you know what? We want to divorce. And you, you tell the church, look, we want to divorce. And then they just, no, no, no. God hates divorce. You, you cannot divorce. And a wife comes and says, my husband is battering me, he's killing me, he's, he's, I mean, he's chatting to kill me. Look at what he's done to me. And you see that it's bad. And then sometimes you find pastors who say, eh, I know it's bad, but our hands are tied. You know, I, I cannot permit um, divorce. The church, see when people talk like that, they don't know the authority that the church carries. Now, you, it, it, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you, you know, what you want to talk about is, so oh, Jesus actually said that God hates divorce. Oh, Malachi said, said God hates divorce. And Jesus said, look, except it's for the case of adultery. But remember, you see, they asked Jesus a question. I, I want you to refresh on this scripture. Now. They said, why did Moses give them, why did Moses say they can divorce their wife? They can give them a bill of divorcement. Jesus made a very powerful statement that we play down on. And then we look at the next thing he says. He says, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, 
allowed you to divorce your wives. But in the beginning, it was not so. Powerful statements. So in the beginning, it was not so. Yes. Then Moses gave you the, the, the right in certain circumstances to divorce your wife. Okay. And then Jesus now goes on further to say, Nevertheless, I say to you, you know, if any man leaves his wife, or except for the case of adultery, he's committing, uh, except for the case of fornication or adultery, he's committing adultery against the, the, the one or so. Now, that, there's a lot to think on that. Now, we find ourselves in a situation where you know from all logical thinking, this couple. They are not doing themselves good staying together. You have prayed, you have fasted, you've done everything to do. It's just not working. So I say, okay, so what should we do? Let me read the scripture to back up this one. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he, is, if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Follow me now. And if he shall neglect to hear them. Now when you take two witnesses. First of all, he says, you go with, go by yourself all alone. Tell him, oh, uh, this thing you're doing is wrong. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's injuring me. It's causing injury to me. He says, if he doesn't listen to you, take two other witnesses. There's a reason for that, which Jesus explained here. And then he says, and if he, if he shall neglect to hear them, then it, tell it unto the church. But if he neglects to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an hidden, as an hidden man and a publican. Then Jesus goes on to say something very powerful. Verse 18. Verily, now, when, when you see Jesus talk and he now says, verily, he says, look, based on this, watch this. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he goes on to say, again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching Anything that he shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Wow. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go into this tomorrow. I don't have time now to, because, because my time is almost up. I don't have time right now to, to explain this thing. So we're going to start from here tomorrow. This is powerful and you need you need this seriously praise god whoa thank you so much lord and i bless your day go out and do well and prosper this day in the name of jesus christ amen <laughs>